Good morning. Day 29. I'm uh, a little muddy here still. Not as bad as yesterday, but uh, anyway, I'm headed out of the Smokies. Haven't gotten to the drop-off box yet. Somewhere back there is uh, Major Tom. Um, I'm gonna wait for him to catch up to me when we get to the uh, drop-off box. The drop-off box is where you have to put your the other half of your permit so that they know you came into the Smokies and know that you went out of the Smokies. You're supposed to do it within eight days. We did it in close to eight days because I guess the Anyway, I don't know how many days it was. Uh, less than eight. That's all that matters. Uh, so yesterday, I didn't film too much because it was pretty hard to film while I was walking, but to all those northerners and kids who played in the snow, it was uh, an entertaining day. I uh, didn't really feel like I was in any danger at any time. Well, except when I was except, except for two days ago when I was freezing. But anyway, I'm headed down to the exit box and then over to, I guess, the rather famous Standing Bear Hostel, which is kind of a hippy-dippy place, I guess. So we're going to resupply and take a little break there and then head up towards uh, Hot Springs, which I think is either 34 or 37 miles. So I still haven't done any laundry. And... Uh, Kind of need to do that for certain particular reasons. You should left the sound on in that last video. Anyway, um, so we'll see. They apparently, they don't have a washing machine. Apparently, you wash your clothes in a barrel and then put it in a dryer. And I'm hoping that they'll let, they'll have like a fee for that for people who don't stay overnight. Um, I kind of wanted to stay there. I kind of didn't want to stay there. So it's not really a loss. This way I can keep going. Major Tom likes to haul ass. I mean, he's already gone. Look at that. He's already way up there. So, uh, so I'm not quite that fast in the morning and filming. And, uh, wow, it's still muddy. So, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. The, um, the, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the climb out of here since it's another gap uh fairly major gap since it came out of the smokies is like three thousand feet it's not um all at once but it's uh several uh they look like they're not quite as steep which is easier to go fast um but it's hard to tell uh so the first the first shelter is at um, about five miles and 3,000 feet or something like that. The second shelter is about 10 miles, about five miles past that, which I'm sure is where Major Tom wants to go. Um, and that's another 2,000 feet, so that would be a mile of elevation climbing tomorrow. Which I know I said the one coming out of the NOC was the biggest climb. That, that I think, is the biggest continuous climb. This is several peaks all added up. And I just figured out on my Far Out app how to uh, see what the total climb of the day is. Um, and just to remind everyone, I'm sure I'll say this many times, the uh, doing the Appalachian Trail is like climbing Mount Everest from the ocean to the top 16 times. Hard to believe. I'm sure my mathematically inclined friends will and family one in particular, Bob, will doubt that. So please do the math yourself. But we do something like 2,000 feet of elevation gain a day. Yeah, so it comes out to be uh, over 5 million steps and uh, whatever 30,000 feet times 16 is. 480,000 feet elevation gain. Get a little hot? Already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway, day 29, hard to believe, but that's what it is. So, uh, we're done. Yeah. Made it through the Smokies. And I'm choking up again. Snow and all.
freezing weather. Okay, so it seems like I'm gonna film a lot today. I'm alone again. Uh, we put our things in the thingy. Got a little choked up. I don't think that uh, Major Tom is the kind of person who likes to see grown men cry, so I didn't cry then, but that was getting choked up again. That was pretty emotional. I think it was 238 miles from just how far I've gone. The gap is called Davenport, and I can't think of the name of the town. But uh, we're going to stop by, I think I already said, the Standing Bear, and then continue on. So, we up the big hill again. Anyway, I just wanted to say that it was... Thank you for all your support and words of encouragement. It's amazing I've gotten this far. Get to my mental state. Oh, there he is again. Speedy Gonzalez. You keep stopping, I'm gonna catch you. <laughs> it's not a race, not a race. Anyway, that's where we are. Beautiful day. Temperature this morning was 58. It seems to have gone down a little bit, 54. And I don't have my shorts on. I got my tights on. It used to be called long underwear. I don't know why they don't call it long underwear anymore. Long johns. Uh, but I have them pulled up a little bit so they're sort of knickers right now. That's cool, knickers. That's what I want to do anyway. But they're warm. <laughs> so I'm a little uh, little hot in the legular area. But anyway, I'm gonna try to go a little faster here. And uh, maybe I'll record around Standing Bear if I think of it. I don't really know that much about it other than people say it's kind of a hippie place just apparently a bunch of, uh, of uh, wooden bunks, no mattresses, and uh, as usual, there's like a bunkhouse and a couple of semi-private places to stay, so anyway, that's it for now. So here's a bit more of the green tunnel, but I thought it was another thing to say. I told you I might film a lot today. This is going to be a long one. Anyway, uh... So I've been thinking about this a lot. There's miles per day, which is like your overall rate. And uh, then there's how fast you walk, which people call pace. So pace is a, is a com combination of uh, step rate and stride. And people that have studied this, that have read about say that it is actually really hard to walk at someone else's step rate or stride uncomfortable which is what it was yesterday in the snow because I was post holing in everyone else's footsteps and their stride was different than mine so sometimes I'd miss a step or whatever anyway um so I I've often noticed that people hikers that pass me have a higher step rate than I do and I think with my short legs, I've been trying to compensate by stretching out my stride, perhaps mistakenly. And yesterday was shorter stride, a uh, higher step rate for the whole day, 15 miles, or, well, no, seven, eight miles. Anyway, in the snow part. Uh, but today I find I'm going much higher step rate and shorter stride, so. Maybe I've changed a little bit. And maybe that's how people walk fast on the trail, I don't know. Anyway, just a thought. Good morning, day 29. This is uh, completely unexpected trail magic. Unbelievable resupply. We don't even have to stop at Standing Bear. We just piled up on a whole bunch of food and 
homemade hot uh, hot dogs and homemade relish. It's just, it's amazing. It's so good. And one thing over here I'm going to zoom in with is a master dog we need to talk about yet. It's right up there is the arrow. Check that out. <laughs> anyway. Okay, day 29, we're at Standing Bear Hostel, which is one of their famous hostels. It really is pretty hippy dippy. Just a quick pan here. It's a bunch of old buildings. It's a bunch of places to stay up there, bunkhouse. We're on some kind of a car road. I don't really know what that is, but it goes down there. This is the staircase into the little resupply place. You see all the little stuff embedded in the concrete. But the coolest thing is, <laughs> so this is the resupply. You just, I don't know why angle. You write down what you take and then you go pay for it down below. But let's just zoom in over here, right? So we got, you know, hand sanitizer, tobacco, and then of course, condoms, because, you know, you might need one. Anyway, Standing Bear, day 29. Day 29, I couldn't resist filming the inside of the, what they call the kitchen at Standing Bear Hostel. This is what it looks like. If you look really close, you can see it says AT in the cut out of the boards of the table. This water is drinkable. <laughs> this is the kitchen. It's kind of amazing. It's all self-help. A few condiments, nothing else. And then outside is where the the party happens. Apparently they have parties around this fire pit and all kinds of amazing stuff. Anyway, that's all. So day 29, we're on the side of a mountain. Way over there, that peak is where we were yesterday, I think. That's the, like 6,000 something feet. And we walked all along that ridge. But once again, look at this forest. It's like 10, 20, 30 year old trees. The whole forest, which means it was logged off. And then bang, that's like 100 years old easily. It's, it's 30 inches across maybe. That's Major Tom there. Huge tree, way up there, totally healthy. Just amazing. Anyway, there's another day giant tree laying down, crashed over, must have been a hell of a sound. And that's maybe two feet in diameter, I guess. But I'm standing really close to the root ball because the chill was right by it. But one, yet again, the roots of this tree, let me just walk up here, the roots of this tree are just interlaced into the rock. And it just ripped all the rock out of the ground when it fell over. I mean, that's massive. That's tons, probably, of dirt and rock. And uh, maybe 10 feet across and 12 feet high or something. It's just incredible how big that is. It must have made thunder when it fell over. I'm guessing by the erosion, and I'm no good at this, but a few years ago, maybe, judged by the amount of erosion. Anyway, day 29, more interesting stuff. Every so often this thing freezes, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I'm sitting here eating lunch. The backpack is right there. <coughs> I'm sitting on a little foam pad thingy. Get my butt dry. We're about halfway up this 2,500 foot climb. And then down a thousand feet to the shelter, I think, I don't know, something like that. Weather is really nice. No sun, it's about 65 or something degrees. But why do we do this? It's, it's, it's so hard, physically hard, mentally hard. <laughs> Keep going, I just, I'm really trying, I'm really trying, but it's so physically hard to keep going up the trail can't really turn around and it's mentally hard to keep going when you get to a place to stop so anyway we're going over max patch i think tomorrow and then down into hot springs hope we'll i have enough food uh anyway it's on my mind and my heart right now day 29 hiker just passed me 
Good Zen, that's his name. Looked like he was in his late 20s, 30s maybe. Uh, big bandage on his knee. Anyway, I was complaining about not being able to go fast today. He said something really cool. He said, every day has its own speed. That is, that's, that's really profound. I like that. Every day has its own speed. Day 29. Day 29. So several people have mentioned the surprises I see during the day or the things that amaze me. So here's two, uh, what looks like iron stakes sticking out of the ground, both with white blazes. One's a little older than the other. But they're not iron stakes. They're railroad track. That's like a one and a half inch, so that's probably two foot narrow gauge. So there must have been rails around here someplace. I mean, I just walked up a long uh, incline, probably too steep for a train, but maybe the logging trains could go steeper. But uh, yeah, it's not something you see in the middle of the woods, but that would explain how they logged it off. If they could get tracks in here. Anyway, that's the surprise for today. Right there. Here's my uh, hand next to it. So you can see it's really small. That was typical of logging, trail, logging rail though. Okay, day 29. Okay, so that's the AT right there where my pack is. I've been dying to see this thing for a long time. I've seen it in so many videos. It's hard to describe. Oh, there's even someone here. That's amazing. So there you go. It's an aviation aid and navigation site. Totally self-contained. Operates by itself. It's got propane. Here's some humming sound. I assume that's uh, air conditioners. Pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. Oop, there's somebody. I forgot to say, I forgot to say it's uh, 67 degrees. It's overcast. It's just absolutely perfect hiking weather. And uh, I'm at 4,200 feet. Those guys actually drove up here. There's a road on the other side and power lines come up here. So now they go down a thousand feet or something. I don't know what it is. Down to the shelter for the night. Wild, man. This is totally wild.